Okay, um, we just took a break, but I'm coming back now because we have some developments. First of all, the storm, we are getting very heavy winds and very heavy gusty winds and rain in Diego Martin. Um, but, so we're going to be monitoring. I, I think that we're in a situation now where the thing is happening. Um, but there's something else I wanted to share with you. And this is some information that's come to hand as important. So I want to give it out now. I was told simply so. And just give me a minute because I'm getting a follow up. I have to make myself a cup of tea because I might fall asleep here. This is becoming a very long two days. And my internet is getting very spotty. Um, while I'm waiting on that information, okay, I'm getting the information now. Apparently, that pilot, that whole um, voice note could be a fraud. It, it could be fake. Because... We're being told the tower hasn't released any aircraft recently. So we have no idea. Um, we're not going to give that any credibility anymore. This, this I want to deal with. Uh, Dr. Keith Rowley. Dr. Rowley, thank you for taking the time. When Anil Roberts, room 201, broke in the public space i wonder if you all cast your mind if you could cast your mind back that night dominic calipasad called kamla pasad bisessa at home and she sounded less than sober and dominic had a time i want children and tobago to listen to this interview because i've been following keith rowley for 31 years and I want you to listen to Keith Rowley's voice. It is either our Prime Minister is unwell, he is totally intoxicated, or this is an imposter. Listen to this interview. And I just need to get it to play. Out tomorrow so that the buildings can be available for spirit if need be. But so far, the... I'm calling to you, I'm talking to you from Tobago where it's now raining and there's a bit of wind. We also have um, no power in a large part of Tobago, but I don't know if they're related. Um, the Met Office has advised us through the OGPM that we um, should not go into any further shutdown other than what we've done so far with the schools. And the system is being monitored and um, we expect it to arrive just about midnight towards one o'clock or thereabouts and we think that we are prepared for any eventuality. And Dr. Rowley, what can you tell us about Compare rumors that tone, public servants tone. aren't expected to turn out to work tomorrow? Listen Has to there your been Prime any Minister, kind of discussion about that? Or drunk? Yeah, you, you well described that those are rumors. Uh, we have not shut down the public service and we have not shut down the country. We have shut the schools down so as to get the school buildings available in the event that we need them. But so far, um, the government has not taken a decision to shut the country down because we have been advised by OGPM, by way of the information coming from the Met Service that we need not go based further than what we've done so far. And they're monitoring the intensity and the powers of the system and we be guided by their scientific information. And Dr. Rowley, as the leader of this country speaking to citizens, some of whom may be very afraid this evening, uh, what are your words to the people of Trinidad and Tobago? I would like to advise all citizens to um, follow the news bulletins that are coming out very frequently you from the authorized drunk. agencies, the OGPM. You paying attention? That is not Keith Rowley's tone. That is not Keith. Let me give it. Look now, I'm not, I'm not CNC3, you know. I don't mix matters, you know. I'm not CNC3. I want you to hear Keith Rowley's voice.
to the Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago in August 2003. As a minister of government in Trinidad and Tobago, a PNA minister, and told him that there was... Suzanne Joseph say he sound like he's sleepy, like he just wake up. Suzanne, he sound like he wake up with the whole pillow in his mouth. Miss me with that, you know. All you need to start to be honest in this country, the man sung in either sick or drunk, and she was to ask him... Everything taking place in you... Because Dominic Calipas had waiting to Kamala, and I telling you something, all you know, I ain't carrying no brief for no yellow or red, but I telling you, what good for gander, good for goose. This is Kim Lowney. Listen. What the Commission of Inquiry is looking at is ten times worse than what happened with the Air Force Airport. This. And on the phone at this point in time, we have Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley. Listen. Dr. Rowley, thank you for taking the time to speak with us this evening. Oh, very good evening to you. Very good evening to our listeners. Dr. Rowley, what are your thoughts on our level of preparedness for this tropical storm? Two double dog and a Johnny Black? I mean, from all the reports that I have, I did a monitoring distance yesterday evening for 6 o'clock. And um, right through last night and into today, and all the agencies are alert and all first responders are ready. The man we have strong. an Office of Disaster Preparedness and Management, and we have a Met Office, which is very good. And they've been monitoring the system and advising the government. And so far, we are prepared to deal with a weather system which um, has caused us to put the schools out tomorrow so that the, uh, the buildings can be available for shelter if needed. And it's even more present. The PNM is on trial. Him? The front tone. Because those of us, it's so bad. those of us who were here and carried the, 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 the O'Halloran stain, we cannot That's him. take the position. In 2009. In 1986, when we went to... This the system is being monitored and uh, we expect it to arrive just about midnight towards one o'clock or thereabouts and we think we are prepared for any eventuality. And Dr. Rowley, what can you tell us about rumors that public servants aren't expected to turn Listen out to, to work tomorrow? To Has there been, been any kind of discussion about that? Yeah, you, you well described the that. Uh, we have not shut down the public service. You recall that is not throat cancer, that is we slurring. We have the schools down so as to get the school buildings available in the event that we need them. But so far, um, the government has not taken a decision to shut the country down because we have been advised by ODPM. By way of the information coming from the Met Service that we need not go any further than what we've done so far. And they're monitoring the intensity and the powers of the system and we be guided by their scientific information. And Dr. Rowley, as the leader of this country speaking to citizens, Listen some of them may be very afraid this evening. Uh, what are your words to the people of Trinidad and Tobago? I would like to advise all citizens to um, the bulletins that are coming out very frequently from the authorized agencies, the OTPM and the Met Service. Follow them and use good common sense to respond. And uh, I expect that by now most people would have heard some of the bulletins and would have responded by preparing in whatever way they chose to be ready to deal with any kind of development. And the best place to be is indoors at this time and following the instructions and the bulletins of the official state agencies, the Office of Disaster Preparedness and Management and the Net Services. And once we do that, I think that we have enough of a structure that is experienced and the system as it passes us to be able to um, protect ourselves as best we can from what's the effect of a weather system that is going from east to west and we expect that by morning all right, thank you so much, Dr. Rowley. Once again, go Lily on kicks. I would ask him, What you drinking in Tobago? That is not Keith Rowley, but our journalists, our media is our media is kicks, kicks, pure kicks. Our media is kicks, they're not serious, they're not serious. You talking to the Prime Minister, the Prime Minister is talking drunk and you don't wait into him? You don't wait into him? Wasting my time. 
wasting my time. Off good night, Philip. Offshore facilities platforms have been dung manned and non-essential personnel have been sent home due to what's ahead. Didn't want to post this on the thread due to where I work. You are doing a wonderful job. Keep up the good work as always. Locked on. But I was sent information from somebody, I want to tell you, a pilot. And the pilot said, no planes left. Piaco Tower has no record. So that voice note, miss me with that. I played it twice, dismiss it. And that's the kind of nonsense we have to deal with. In a nation where your prime minister is either sick or drunk or in Tobago gargling marbles. Because this is how we're supposed to sound. In my area, I was there. I don't know who else was there. I was there. And you're going door to door. And you're slamming doors in your face in West Moorings, in Glencoe, in Bayshore. And all they tell you about is O'Halloran. Them in Tobago drunk. He drunk. I want a blood test. I want my prime minister to go and have a blood test. I want Faris, you say you want to check people for, for drugs? Check your prime minister. A nation facing a, a natural disaster and your prime minister slurring. This place gone mad. Royal Imperial Majestic Banana Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. And I bet you money. CNC trip pull that video. But we have it recorded now in this. We have it recorded now in this one. Hearing his tone of voice. That is not your prime minister. That is not Kid Rowley. You know, he never was my prime minister. That is not Kid Rowley's tone. That is not his correct voice. Ben, somebody said, just spoke to someone in Blanche. She says it's calm up there. I think the North Coast is calmer. Diego Martin getting a little busy. But, but, how is it possible that we not taking this seriously? How? How is it? Uh, I want you to tell me. Dr. Keith Rowley. Dr. Rowley, thank you for taking the time to speak with us this evening. Oh, very good evening to you. Very good evening to all of us. Dr. Rowley, what are your thoughts on our level of preparedness for this tropical storm? Well, so far, I mean, from all the reports that I have, I've been monitoring this since yesterday evening for 6 o'clock. And um, right through last night and into today, and all the agencies are alert and our first responders are ready. We have an Office of Disaster Preparedness and Management, and we have a Met Office, which is very good. And they've been monitoring the system and advising the government, and so far, we are prepared to deal with the slurry. weather system which um, has caused us to put the school out tomorrow so that the to uh, buildings can be available for shelter if, if need be. <laughs> but so far the um I'm calling you I'm talking to you from Tobago where it's now raining and there's and a bit of We also have um, no power in the so last part of Tobago but I don't know if they're related. And he's still um, the Met Office has advised us through the ODPM that we um, only need not go into any further shutdown other than what we've done so far with the schools. Yeah, and the system is being monitored and um, we expect it to arrive just about midnight towards one o'clock or thereabouts and we think that we are prepared and for any event. And, and Dr. Rowley, Rudy, what can you tell us drunk. about Listen rumors that picture. public servants aren't expected Listen to turn out to work tomorrow? Has there been any kind of discussion about that? Yeah, you, you well described that those are the rumors. Uh, we have not shut down the public service and we have not shut down the country. We shut the schools down so as to get the school buildings available in the event that we need them. But so far, um, the government has not taken the decision to shut the country down because we have been advised by ODPM, by way of the information coming from the MET service that we need not go any further than what we've done so far. And they're monitoring the intensity and the powers of the system and we be guided by their scientific information. And Dr. Rowley, as the leader of this country speaking to citizens, some of whom may be very afraid this evening, uh, what are your words to the people of Trinidad and Tobago? I would like to advise all citizens to um, follow the news bulletins that are coming out very frequently from the authorized agencies, the OTPM and the Met Service. Follow them and use good common sense to respond. And uh, I expect that by now most people would have heard some of the bulletins 
I would have responded by preparing in whatever way they I will, chose. I will share the link. I will share the link. Now, on the thread, copy it quick. Before, before CNC3 take it down. The man drunk. I ask him, I tell him, he's slurring his words. That's why he couldn't answer whole day. Whole day I ask him, where the Prime Minister? Jesus Christ. Whole day I ask him, where the Prime Minister? Turns out the Prime Minister busy. I'm going to put it in the thread. Listen to it yourself. It is him. It is him. But you see the media, the media, look, the media in this country, so corrupt and compromised, you know, nothing, nothing that come out of the media, nothing coming out of the media I taking on anymore, nothing. Tell them all this thing. Corrupt to the thing. core. Stay. All them journalists and, and news readers, all of them, find out who they who paying their rent and their mortgage? Nastiness going on. Hmm. A cup of tea wake me up. See what going on? Everybody drunk. she asked him fully staged properly set up a nonsense a pose interview this is you are you are having the first interview with the nation's prime minister hours before the nation is supposed to face a natural disaster and that is the bullshit you're going to ask him who you're trying to fool everything staged everything is nonsense and the man sung and drunk if he's not drunk he's sick if he's not sick he have a mouth full of marbles and it on the thread find it record it copy it rip it keep it because cnc3 going and pull that they going and pull that when the rest of them listen and say no boy is sung and drunk so tell them come for me tell them we don't pray nobody all of them who are confronted with any all of the time
Saturday gone. Standing room only in Shabona West. Wednesday the 20th of June, we're going to spill out in the road. Pep on the move, the Progressive Empowerment Party on the move. You see all this foolishness passing for representation? It is time for you to come out and reclaim your government. This is the platform, the mechanism and the means for you to do that. It is time to fire this bunch of mocking pretenders. Time to fire them. Think about what's going on. This is a nation right now. It is only because it's only because of social media and all the work that is being done on social media, the raw information, it's so perfect. I mean, if you go and stand up TNT, you could track this storm from the moment it's born to where it is right now. Social media have the country calm. A wash with information. You know where to go, what to do, who to do, who to talk to, turn, turn to, to anything. You've had interviews. You've heard from people that told you we are we are under control. Social media have the nation calm. If it wasn't for social media, people wouldn't have panic. There are set of rumors and a set of old talk. Three, four, long and one. You know how much things come to me that I ain't let come out yet that we hold back because we can't verify it. And a vex around that voice note because now that I'm told that they have no record of any flight. That voice note is bogus. So ignore that. We do not know what is the state of this storm as of present. We have the 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 hurricane, the um, update from the National Weather Center. You have that AccuForecast, forecast. And we have the other one from Florida. So we know we're on top of the game. Even if we're not getting timely releases from our own Met Office, even if we're not getting timely updates from our own ODPM, we're getting it from outsiders. So we're on top of the game and we know what's going on. God bless social media. To us with CNC3 and TV6, what Gold Lily Bruce did tonight was stage theatre. That's not even reality TV. In reality TV, you don't know what the other person going and say. That was theatre. That was put on to fool you. Rouse a drunk man and tell him, answer them three questions. Making asses of the people. This can't continue. You cannot run a country this way. This way. I am sorry. Kevin Mahadev said just now news will be obsolete. I played a clip today of Gold, the same Gold Lily begging social media to send them information because they have jack all. Where all your journalists, all your cameramen, all your fire everybody and you want to play your rebroadcasting social media news while jamming social media. Miss we with that. Miss all of we with that. Diego Martin was very rainy and very gusty. It is very hot and a little breezy. This could be the calm. We're waiting to see what's going on. It's getting to be that time. Monkey monkeys, red and drunk, yellow and drunk. What the hell is going on? A set of posers and playboys and playgirls. Where we get this from? Are they ever really in charge of the country? Or are they just fronting some deep pocket finances who put them up to fool the races? Go and look black. Go and look Indian. Tie them up and fool them. Change and exchange while we rape and rape and rape the treasury. Where the people money? 50 billion dollars spent in healthcare and we can't fix as a... a a city scanner, the people, <laughs> boy. I've 
some updates. I want to give you the updates. We're being told that the Lady of Road Mover is impassable due to fallen utility poles. Seek alternative routes. You do not want to be stuck on Lady of Road Mover during a catastrophe. Use alternate routes. Right? Um, what else we have up to date? Reports from Brasso Village, Central Trinidad, power outage due to high winds, multiple trees, and power lines down. Some roads to Tabakit are blocked. Tropical storm, Brett. Conditions are quickly deteriorating for Trinidad and Tobago. Sustained winds of 64 kilometers per hour occurring on parts of Trinidad. The leading edge of the core of tropical storm bread is less than 30 kilometers from Trinidad's eastern shores. As the center, and this is 13 minutes ago, as the center of the tropical storms move nearer and nearer to Trinidad Tobago, sustained winds across Trinidad will continue to increase. Gusts with higher wind speeds will occur and rainfall. Areas along Trinidad's east coast must brace for the worst of tropical storm bread. An area of heavy rainfall likely including the strongest winds with tropical Storm bread is moving on shore. Guayagayari, Mayaro, Rio Claro, and surrounding areas will be the first impacted within the hour. This strong cluster will continue to move west northwest and impact south and central Trinidad. Impacts to Trinidad and Tobago, gusty winds in excess of 65 km per hour, straight flash and river flooding, increased chances of landslides, landslips, frequent thunder and lightning, increased chances of downed trees blocking roadways, storm surge on Trinidad and Tobago's coast. That was 13 minutes ago, you have an update there. I think you could be guided if by that. They are the reason why the economy could sprout when you're voting for them all. If it is the passing laws that them alone can block when you're voting for them all. If it is the building I search in West Northern South, the same way you vote. You have to admit to yourself. You have to admit to your past and your future self. You have to admit to your loved ones. This country has been mismanaged and abused. There is no other way to put it. Have you ever in your, in your entire life, have you ever driven on a road and say, this is a well-maintained road? For a country that owns the largest natural pitch lake in the world, this, this is a well-maintained road. Have you ever, ever, have you ever, but road pavers are billionaires flying jets to Las Vegas and France. Have you ever felt like you have been the real beneficiary of the billions of dollars spent on public works paving roads using your pitch? Have you ever felt that way? If you focus on that alone, under Kamala and the Drunky Bunch, under Keith and his Drunky Bunch, have you ever felt like government was for the people? Have you ever felt that way? Or have you watched finances and investors and friends and family of government ministers benefit and eat deep and hard, come out fat and wealthy, and you have to wonder, how the hell it is that the people of this country, election come, election go, the people never benefit, never benefit, never. When was the last time you drove on a road in Trinidad and Tobago mindless of potholes? When was the last time a proper road stitched and seemed correct, slip drain, sidewalk, properly set up when that you don't have to fall long in a hole that is really masking as a manhole cover when was the last time be honest with yourself because if you cannot think of a time and billionaires i mean northern construction calco junior sami kusals these fellas they make joke rich now you know paving road when have you ever felt like you were the material beneficiary of all of that. When? When? Ask yourself that. Because that is what you have to vote for or against. You have to admit. 
if we've had 55 years of paving, 55 years of millionaire and billionaire creating road paving spending, but we've never had good roads, we've never had a good government, never. How many of y'all know what's going on with PowerGen? How many of y'all know why PowerGen in Port of Spain shut down? How many of y'all have asked who owns the property now that PowerGen stands on? How many of you are asking those questions? How many of you are aware that this government is trying to sell Trinidad's electricity generating company to a German firm? How many? How many of you know that a UNC financer of all people is the man brokering the deal? How many? How many of you know three of them name calling Panama? Panama Papers. How many? How many? You think it's joke mark the bus? But you're living in a country where if you go to the police commission and you say, look, investigate this, you're lucky if you get a reply. Who do you go to? The Integrity Commission? They can't even get them to fill in their forms. Criminal matters have been referred from the Integrity Commission to the DPP on, be, on naming public officials who have failed to declare and live up to the terms of the Integrity in Public Life Act and nothing done. Nothing. From the top down, this country rotten to the core. When I tell you something, it is one thing you had to do, you know. If we win a simple majority, walk away. Because you're going in the parliament to, say, to play the same jackass games they play now. If we win a simple majority, walk away. Give it back to them. Take it back. We don't want it. You need to have a special majority to go into this place and reboot. You need to be prepared for them to bring terrorists and attackers to take down your government. Because the financial class fat off of billions. They may letting that go so. So you can't go in the parliament. When you listen to Fouad Khan and Terence the Alsing talk, I mean, it makes me feel sick to listen to these, these two jackasses, neither of which has ever done anything of benefit to anybody. And a man dead. Not he's not the only one that dead, but it is the worst death we've seen so far. To see our old elderly gentleman could have been any one of our fathers crawling around, grabbing at grass, begging for help. His last thoughts had to be, how damned am I? How damned am I to be a Trinidad? Yeah, no, to be in Trinidad, on my, to have my last breath so undignified, so embarrassing and humiliated. But if you are not thinking that, forget this. Forget all of this. Pass me straight. Pass my wall straight. Say he's a madman. This guy fix. We like it so. We like it so. Leave it so. We jam and still. Nobody can fix it and all the other cockery. We just want to talk to explain it. Look today. Look today. Look today. Disaster facing this nation. And the UNC communication team want to put out a picture of Faris jam up with a skinny little Indian girl. And that is their politics. And the PNM drunk in Tobago, if they're in Tobago. That's your country. That is your whole country. And people asking me about splitting the votes. Only well, a shame splitting the votes. If they have anybody that's still willing to vote PNM or UNC after everything you know and see and get an opportunity to escape from the rape, licks and abuse and you don't, they could keep you. They could keep you. Because we can't continue like this. Certainly can't continue like this. Look at these numbers. If it was Tiller, what's her name? Kia Rankin and Rachel Price lambasting each other 10,000 views if it was Ian Allen in the pink socks and the white glasses 3 million views this country not like this because of anybody else but us we
I don't know that ready, I ain't want fame. Plus, I ain't looking for fortune again. All I'm asking is that you pay close attention to the many problems we all face from dawn to dawn. You're intelligent, I think, and you should face issues. But you're behaving like a moron, cursing me for where I'm born. But you fight me hand no water, you pay too much for butter. Take a steel beam and go. The terrible school system is such a bloody problem. Take a steel beam and go. Agriculture's in a state, planning is inadequate. Take a steel beam and go. The northern and southern idol, it took him. We're still working hard. I want to tell you this. The Progressive Empowerment Party is going to do everything in its power to inform, educate, and turn the people around. Wake them up, open their eyes, free their minds, and get them lined up from early in the morning to vote this bullshit out. To show that we really don't like it so. If we fail, conscience is so clear. You will see me posting pictures, sipping tea, Paris. And I tell you so. Because if after now, if either of those two PNM or UNC ever get voted back into power again, I, Philip Alexander, leave it for good. I'll never come back. I will do like the rest of the happy Trinidadians. You ever see a Trinidadian exhale? You ever see a Trinidadian genuinely happy? I ain't talking about drunk on the avenue or drunk gyrating on a naked Bamsi Carnival Tuesday morning. I'm talking about normal, normal day, genuinely happy. Go on Facebook and look among your friends and find the ones who are looking happy. I bet your money they escape. They're living somewhere else. And you could turn me off. Could walk away from what I see. You hear this? Fireball me. I just listen to the jackasses talk. But at the end of the day, I know what I put in out. I put in it out for a reason. Because at the end of the day, I will be able to say, I tried. I didn't hold back. I didn't hold back anything at all. I put everything on the line for my country. Every single thing on the line. I gave everything away free. I told Junkie Monkey, steal my ideas. Steal them. Use them. Put them in. in implement them. No current in Lopino. The Barataria flood is from 2016, so stop spreading that. Yeah? All of the people that are happy Trinidadians, 90% of them foreign-based. And they're doing well, you know. They're doing well. Let me tell you something, eh? They're wiping table in restaurants, you know. Tell like they're living in shit and die, you know. They're working in construction, in mechanic yard, nurse. They're working as assistant, home care assistant, and all kind of nonsense. But they're making proper money, you know. And you turn twice, they pay down on the first house, you know. Pay down on the first house. You see them posting the picture on the car, it's the small car. This small car in Trinidad is a big car. It's a big car. And they're living well. And they're eating well. And they have all of the benefits of everything. Here, here, catch us is we name, we size, and we length. What we born to do? That's what we born to do. And you listen to the fools, and you look at the fools defending it. Click on their profile picture. Wait to see a picture of the house, some old board house, or sixteen brick waiting for cement. Click on it and look. The yard is mud. The children walking around in, in drawers and panty, living like we still in 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 eighteen twelve. Look at it. And that is everywhere. That's this country. We have half of the people of this nation, black and Indian, living in quiet, quiet desperation, total squalor. Total and complete squalor. Look at it. This country bracing tonight for flood because it's a, we have a situation that can't take normal rain. So if we get two to four inches at one time, it'll mash it up. Rain, flood will reach three and four feet off the ground. 
you have a situation where your government is failing you. Not accidentally, deliberately. So it's friends and finances could steal your money. And if that is not enough to disgust you, to sacrifice everything that you need to sacrifice, to say, you know what, I've done till this done, it can't fix. It can't fix. And I will agree, admit defeat, and go my way. I'm a bright fellow, you know. Anybody who know me tell you that, and I ain't saying that cocky, I'm bright. You drop me anywhere and I'll do well. Well. So I don't have to worry for me. I go, I go on. And I don't mind working in a bakery, needing dough. My, my vision for my life was to be a writer for the rest of my days. Calm, quiet, happy. I'm not an ego monster. I don't need it flashy and fancy. I cool. So when they think that I have, that I have any, any other skin in the game, other than to try and help my country, they're wrong. And they're full in your head with bullshit. Because when you go and you find the people of this country, go and find farmers. Go and find farmers catching their mother neck to get a piece of paper signed by the bloody land settlement agency so they could go by the bank and get a little bit of finance so they could grow some food and sell in the bloody market that they just take away to give a partner so he could build a $10 million walkover. Yeah, bullshit, buddy. You hear that? Talk about it now. Talk about it. Talk about it. This is a nation where everybody gagged. They gagged. Can't talk. They gagged. Everybody wants to send it to me. Look, Phil, you hear about this? You see this? You bust that mark now, Phil. Everybody gagged. The doctors gagged. The doctors watching criminal malpractice being practiced by the Ministry of Health and can't say boo. Because they could go to jail. It is easier to jail employees of the central bank and the supervisor of insurance than it is to jail people who are actually guilty of white collar crime in this country. The Financial Intelligence Unit publishing fiction every year. They're telling you $15 billion unaccounted for. Where does it go from, from there? What happens after that? Who picks it up and says, I will follow through? Who? Who in this country brings those cases to prosecution? Who? Where? When? How? Look around you. And it is so because we allow it to be so. That is the only reason it is so. Rohan Sinanan still have a job because Tobago take that rape. They bite down on, they bite down on their lip. Eh? They taste their own blood and they take that rape every single day. He like an abusive husband. Come home, kick down the door. Licks, rape, feed me and let me go. Get out here getting with the Tobago boats. Everything about the Tobago Sea Bridge now, from cargo to passenger, is pure abuse. Tobagonians have been lowered from second class citizens to fourth, and they take that because Tobagonians didn't shut down Tobago. And Trinidad would have taken the queue, you know, because if Tobagonians had shut down Tobago, Trinidadians would have shut down Trinidad. Rohan Sinanan was to be fired investigated, prosecuted, and jailed. But he didn't, and that didn't happen. So now he's going to do a bigger master plan with the Cure Up Interchange and k Donna Drive-In. Go and investigate and find out who owns k Donna Drive-In, which is going to become the Cure Up Interchange. Go and find out who owns it. In this mad land. Mad, mad land. Good friend of mine, she called me, she said she going into politics. I said, you can't go into politics. She said, why? I said, because your friend is the daughter of a corrupt minister. And you have to either decide to jail your friend's father or become corrupt. And that's your choices. She ain't talked to me after that. But that is the truth. That is the truth. And you and me and we have to decide if there is going to be a Trinidad and Tobago of value to anybody ever. Right now, all are we holding with corner, you know. Everybody in China and Tobago hustling. That's all we're doing, hustling. Until Friday or maybe Saturday, they go and drink with us, stupid. 
to pretend for a minute that it's not as bad as it is and then taking selfie in the toilet and lying and saying we're happy we're not happy they have nothing about this country happy nothing nowhere nobody nobody happy none the children of the bandit class they know their father and mother is crooks so they can't be happy because the peers watching them and they know last week he was living in a board house and your father get a job and all of us are all in a bim up living in fairways on a minister's salary how did that happen yeah but we have no follow through we have no follow up so they know that all they have to do is take the embarrassment of the bus mark. Take the embarrassment for a minute. Talk about it for a minute. Lambase me. Because I have $90 million in the bank. I get $90 million. So you could talk your talk. Because you will forget me in a week when I next mark bus. And my $90 million and me, we good. So this is a country where the people who could prosecute can't. The people who have the power to charge and prosecute won't. And the public, the only benefit we get is to talk shit talk. That is it. Talk shit talk. Somebody asked me if I think Eric Williams knew how corrupt Johnny O'Halloran was. I said the answer to that question, regardless of the outcome, means Eric Williams was not suitable to be prime minister of this country. Because if he knew, then he was corrupt too. And if he didn't, then he was, an, he was incompetent as prime minister. And both are reasons to fire him. And that's why Kamala should never be prime minister again. Regardless of what Rowley do. It is not Kamala to replace Rowley. Kamala had her turn. And she made a royal mess of it. And if you cannot say that because your hair is straight, or your family is Indian, then miss me. Take your jamming. Go back for Kamala and Rudal and Fuad and all the rest of them. Go back and take that jam. Move from jam to jam. Move from jam to jam. Because Rowley is a jackass. Leading a pack of jackasses. The entire government is a joke. And you cannot give me enough justification anymore. No lesser evil bullshit anymore to justify putting Kamala and them there. And you can't bring Pande back. So if you can't think beyond Kamala and Pande, if you cannot think beyond these people here as your leadership, then the whole UNC rotten to the core and Indian people will never have proper representation. It is rape in your name. I will rape on your behalf. Check yourself. All the banditry done in this country has been done in your name and you have had to defend it. Because when black people talk about your bandits, you have to talk about black people bandits and both of you are fighting to defend your bandits as if you all had a cut and a share. Madness. Total, absolute madness. The Royal Imperial Majestic Banana Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. But you have an opportunity now, you know. Forget me. Forget me, build a party. The Progressive Empowerment Party doing and saying all the right things. Come and elect a better political leader than me. And go into office with plans, programs, policies, ideas, guts, backbone, and belly. Trust me when I tell you. That's what you have to do because this is your last chance the congress of the people making a mockery of words like morality and integrity the congress of the people that should have long since been dead and buried after winston dukaran threw his tantrum in the parliament and exposed himself to be the selfish egotistical jackass that he was because he didn't get deputy prime minister he had to throw a tantrum and mash up his whole party. Winston Dukaran only care about going and win awards in India to come back and pose in the sunset of his life. 
These people, I don't understand them. You're aging. You can't pee straight. When you wake up in the morning, everything has to be hurting. Why are you still fighting down self-glorification? I could never understand that. I could never understand that. So by the time Winston Dukaran was done, there was nothing left of the cult of personality that was the Congress of the people. And it was a mini cult. Because those who jump in early, like a, it's like a pyramid. The Congress of the people is like a pyramid, you know. Those who jump in early and they cash out early, they get big posts, they get some recognition, and they go on. It's those at the bottom to catch, fighting like fools to defend foolishness. Because the Congress of the people was always a reaction between Dukaran and Pandey. Because Pandey made Dukaran political leader, but stay as chairman of the party and kept opposition leader for himself. So Dukaran said, but I am political leader, I should be opposition leader. Pandey tell him this is my party, hush him out. So Dukaran and some partners bounce up with the West Morin's crew and create the Congress of the people. But the West Morin's crew really want proportional representation. They want things like good governance because they're a minority. So they want proportional representation and they need to know that they're in government. But they, have to, but they deal with fellas like Monilal and Ganga Singh and they will cut their throat. When the scorpion climb up on the frog back and ask the frog for a drop across the river and the frog say, no, you're going to sting me. The scorpion said, don't be a fool. If I sting you, both of you are dead. Halfway across the river, the scorpion sting the frog. And while drunk in the frog asks him why he do that, he says, a scorpion, that's what I just do. That is why the COP mash up and the UNC in opposition today. Scorpion and frog politics. That is all they know. That is all the UNC know. Zero sum game. All or nothing. All or friggin' nothing. So when, so when the little West Moines crew, because you see the newspapers, the media give you a shot, of Dukaran and Kamala on the Pagua ground. Only remember that? The world united. It's like the Beatles got back together. But it was all bullshit. It was all bullshit because the real chess players, they had their game figured out. And the Congress of the people was a means to an end. And I wrote a million words on that. And I told them, but the COP didn't want to hear that then because some of them had blue lights itis. Some of them was living large. You just get that extra heaviness in your pants when you're a minister, you know. You're a swagger. Call them young girl who looking for age to see how a better job. Them doing anything for you and they're telling you anything you want to hear. And as half these bouncies in it for ego because they don't like what they see in the mirror. So if the girls and them telling you they're seeing something better, you'll take their word for it. All of this is the truth. Viagra politics. Go and check it. Go in the Hyatt. Go in the Hyatt. Fitzgerald Hines taller now that he in government than when he was in opposition. Go and check it. This is our government. This is what we've known as government. And the people have nothing. Have nothing to show for it. I hear heavy rain and wind in the east. We're supposed to be talking hurricane and storm watch. But everything comes down to this. The country is mismanaged to the point where the constituencies can't defend themselves. So the communities are broken. And if the communities are broken, you're starving the family. And if you starve and you break the family, the nation in peril. And that's where we are. So all these little black hen chicken that can't get a life, they can't get a step up. Because the school you're putting them in is a shit school. And you know, and I know, the teachers that defend in it know, and they're lying to themselves and they're lying to me, that 90% of the schools in this country, if you shut them down, you do the children a favor. It's pure shit. Half the teachers not showing up. And if they show up, they're drunk or they're high or they're sleeping in the class, and they may care to ask about your children. So you're taking these little children from more of a beat them lab until and see lots of the rest of the impoverished areas in this country and you're jamming them in school to deal with teachers who ain't care to teach them. Find money now. Find money in the evening and come. Go and sell nuts and come and go teach you the same curriculum home by me. $150 an hour. If they think this country broken and joke. 
So them little fellas who can't get education, so they come out of school with nothing. And they're black. In a black man country, you know. But they black hair and for some reason is a curse. So they're coming out of school black already. And now they have no education. So they're unemployable. And they go and they sit down in Pizza Boys or Lockwood and the Gans or Massey. And they write down, never dirty. And when the person watch them and smile and shake their hand and say, we will call you. When you walk out of the room, they throw the application form in the dustbin. So you have to find a friend who living in Woodbrook and ask them to receive your mail there. Go and check in Massey, Lockland and the Gans and Pizza Boys, KFC. Go and check how many people answer my car living in Woodbrook. Woodbrook must be have 3 million people living in it. First, nobody want to put Lavantel, Mova, Beatum, Sealot, Abbey Pujad, Big Yard. Who hiring people from there? Who are people from there? This country is a joke. It is a madness. You are a Labor Day march today. Go and find out what that ever does for anybody. What does labor need to march for in this country? You have the power strike and you have the industrial court. What's all the bullshit about? Shut it down? La wage negotiations. That's all they know. 50 years of unions. Not one union has saw it fit yet to ask for parity for the workers. It's raise after raise after raise. You get the raise and they raise the price, you're back to square one. You get the raise and they raise the price, everybody back to square one. Playing the ass with people. But going down in Charlie King Junction to talk about the day, the police and the man and the bus head and the gun and the da, the da, the da. Not one ass getting done. From Roger to McLeod to, what is this fake rasta? But these primers, all of them a crook as bag of ass. Absolutely nothing. I talk into 217 people. You say I'm a fool. All of this information, rich, dripping in diamonds and gold. Trinidadians don't care about this. Trinidadians don't care about none of this. I am starting to realize Trinidadians want somebody to solve the problem for them. And that's all they want. They make they don't want it to change. They don't want it to change. We, the people of Trinidad and Tobago, need to decide what we are. We need to decide that. We need to decide if we are a nation of citizens committed to the principles of democracy, believing that we are a republic, a nation ruled by law, who wants every creed and race to find an equal place. We need to decide if that is who we are. Because it seems that we've decided we are something else, even though we, we talk those words. We stand up, and I'm playing, and we talk those words. But if we ever, ever really thought that's who we were, this country would have been different. It would have been different. Yeah! Revelation! What do you think Wendell Man Warren and crew meant when they said, far too long, you're fooling the children, filling their head with brainwash education? What do you think he meant? You think he was referring to anything other than how the society is structured and why the children of Morvan, Beatum, Lavantil, and Sealots, generation after generation, nothing ever changes. Nothing changes. If anything, it gets worse. That's what he's trying to say. That you live in a society that has taught our people 
to get drunk and and sex. That's what we are. Bend down, bend over. Drunk and sex. That's it. Work hard and get sex. We are a nation of people forever chasing sex. When I drive past Harvard, it used to be called Harvard Roundabout by Pizza Hut Roxy, and I see these little children that Angostura take pictures of in bikinis and wet t-shirts to plaster to sell rum, to get them our $600 and tell them, you're, 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 you're getting big up. You're getting big up. I ain't, listen. Very quite pandorific, cause the children commence to take back the pit. We power the word in the conscious silence. We let you for a brand new morning. We power the word in the rap so silent. Rock in the roots of the vampire system. Talk it all, you pop the gender. Talk it all, you blood receiver. Talk it all, you silver master. Talk it all, you free and oppressor. So two ministers in the government, the Prime Minister and the Minister of Public Utilities, who was formerly the Minister of Works, have told the people that the people have to wean off of government providing roads and schools and sidewalks and water and electricity and all of the above. So I ask, what the fire truck is the function of government? Keith Rowley, what is your job? If not to provide this, what is your job? Fitzgerald Jackass Hines. If your job as Minister of Public Utilities is not to put water in people's taps, what is your job, jackass? <laughs> but when you tell Hamer that nonsense, Hamer couldn't answer that question because they're a fire Hamer. in all them parties. This was here regular. These two things. Philip, they want you bad. But they afraid you. Because they can't control you. They want you bad. You know either side. This silver tongue I have here. Want it in that side. Bad. But they can't control you. They afraid you. Turn it on them. So to be in government, you have to sell out and become a part of the bandit clan on either side. Because the only way they will accept you is if you guarantee that as long as I am working for you, you can thief where you want to thief. I see that. And that's why Vassan Barrett should never be anybody's leader. Because I showed Trinidad and Tobago, Vassan Barat misbehaved in public office when he was the Minister of Communications and he lied. And I showed the public evidence in the public space that he was telling an actual lie and that he knew it because he was contradicting his own self. And all of these mocking pretenders, all they're doing is lining themselves up to play let's make a deal. Let's make a deal. Who's supplying the traffic lights? Give me that work now. I want to play. Uh, let me supply the paint that is paying the road. All you want garbage trucks? Who does give you the wheels for the planes? All of this bullshit is take place, you know. All of this. All of this. Every single thing that is in the public space, somebody get a beneficial contract for that. 
overpriced and inflated it, stole public funds and split it with the public official that gave them the contract. That is your reality. And when your mommy and your tante go in the hospital and they put into lie down on brown paper, it is because you have stayed silent that that continues. There's a saying, what you allow is what will continue. Let me give you some weather updates. Tropical storm breath advisory number two. Tropical storm warning remains in effect for Trinidad and Tobago, Grenada and its dependencies. This tropical storm warning means that in this case, Trinidad and Tobago can expect tropical storm conditions over the next 12 hours and Grenada and its dependencies can expect tropical storm conditions within 6 to 15 hours. At 8 p.m. Monday, June 19, 2017, the center of tropical storm breath was located near, right, we had, we got all that. Tropical storm breath, we have all that information. So, I am realizing that the National Hurricane Center Advisory out of Miami, Florida is what we should be following because that comes out about a half hour before and then Trinidad just repackages it and republishes it because the National Hurricane Center gave us that information before. Power outage reported in Lopino, Trinidad. But power outage, that one house, a block, a street, the neighborhood, they say no power in fishing pond, Sandy Grande. Yeah? More on the storm. The storm, it shows that um, the path of the storm is dipping south to run between lower half of China and Tobago and Venezuela. Um, I, there's nothing that I could share. There's nothing there, but this is the most up to date. I want to see if if the um, is there any else on this? Don't do that. some video out of Trinidad and Tobago of what is now Tropical Storm Brett. You can see some pretty strong wind there for sure. Look at the uh, direction of the leaves on some of those palm trees. Yeah, you can hear the wind there too. Um, this is a storm that right now has a sustained wind around 40 miles an hour or so. You remember this was potential Tropical Cyclone 2. Now they have determined, the National Hurricane Center, that this is a tropical storm. And by the way, just to give you a little bit of perspective here, um, this is the... Don't hear him, that's right. Okay, so we're southeast of the United States. This is not a storm that's going to affect the United States, but it's going to affect a lot of people. This is northeastern uh, South America here. You've got the Windward Islands. Sharing this the, um, on the thread. Uh, the uh, Leeward and on my down there, just toward the north of South America. And this storm basically moves toward the west as it does so. Initially, it's going to gain a little bit of strength. Okay, so it gets up to about a 50-mile-an-hour storm or so. And then it will lose strength pretty quickly as it gets farther toward the west, a little bit closer to Aruba. Now, there is going to be a lot of rain that falls here. Um, some spots could see, you know, three to eight inches, depending on exactly where you are. Trinidad and Tobago, you still got plenty to go. Uh, luckily, it's a pretty fast-moving storm as it gets into the uh, Central Caribbean. I mentioned it is going to lose strength pretty quickly. Two to four inches have become three to eight inches. Eh? Pay attention to that. The advantage is that the storm is moving fast, which means that it should not, la it, the, the length of time that we are exposed to storm conditions will not be long. Um, what else do we have that we can see if we get some information, if anything change on the National Hurricane Center, because that was from weather.com. Um, a lot of this information, again, I'm getting from Shamala Maraj, my choice for agriculture minister, food production minister, I have to convince her if we ever get into government. She is ridiculously talented. Um, I'm not finding the National Hurricane Center link. So, up uh, and just now. See there many updates here. Right, no, that is still the same. See if anything updated here.
on the AccuWeather Thanks for joining us on AccuWeather. We're checking in on the tropics. I'm AccuWeather meteorologist Julia Wyden. No, it's not changed. It's the exact same information, and she doesn't talk about Brent. So, yeah, um, as it stands, we're waiting to see what happens. It is quarter to ten. We always knew that it was supposed to be between any, anywhere between six and midnight. Um, I'm happy if the storm doesn't hit Trinidad. I'd be upset to know that the people who take these things for granted will consider it a victory. And it shouldn't be because it's symptomatic of why the country is how it is. We live in a fast food fool's paradise. We are the number one consumer of KFC chicken per capita in the world and that's an insult to us because we're also the number one for cases of death by heart disease in the Western Hemisphere. The Royal Imperial Majestic Banana Republic. You've had governments. You have a jackass come to power and tell you peel cassava. Where the cassava planting plan? Where the cassava plan? Let's process cassava. Turns out that cassava is also high glycemic, like wheat flour. So there's no advantage to putting up with all that stringiness in cassava. It's high glycemic, it spikes your sugar. The things we need to be focusing on, the best thing that we have that could change the world is breadfruit. And we should be dealing with breadfruit. But that does us conversation for another story. Yeah? Bankers Association of Trinidad and Tobago wishes to advise its customers and the public that all commercial banks will be closed tomorrow, Tuesday, 20th June 2017. This has become necessary due to the approaching tropical storm Brett, which will negatively affect weather conditions across the Twin Islands. Bankers Association of Trinidad and Tobago apologizes for any inconveniences caused as we protect the safety of our customers and staff which are a priority at this time. The Bankers Association also encourages the public to take the necessary precautionary measures to keep their homes and families safe. At this time, we expect normal operating hours will resume for all banks on Wednesday, June 21st, 2017. Bankers Association of Trinidad and Tobago will continue to monitor the situation and advise the nation and the public where necessary.
Good evening, Mr. Alexander. I agree with you that to have a Trinidad and Tobago worth living in, we have to draw a line in the sand. I believe we have to be like you. Zero tolerance to something that is wrong. How can we become like this? How can our people change a mindset of accepting abuse and becoming worthy of actually having a country? Maybe all countries have, have this growth history where we move from a childlike society to a more mature society where we are worthy of the country. We have to go from being post-colonial simpletons to being true, true citizens who question everything. Maybe we should ask people to make a personal decision to grow up. I just heard you say Trinidadians want someone else to solve the problem and sadly this is true. But we need to act, behave and think first world. Then we will create the country we deserve. You have inspired me to do my part. I will follow the PEP. I like that. I don't know what it translates to in the greater scheme of things. Right, so I'm going to take a break now. Um, I want to remind you, those of you who have not yet joined the party, if you want, peptrinbago at gmail.com is the fastest way to contact us. We have our Meet the Members meetings every Saturday at noon on 19 Stanmore Avenue. If you would like to be a part of that meeting, come. Come and see, hear, meet, learn, talk, add, think, try. Come and see if the conversation makes sense to you. You hear all the things we say. Come and listen to the rest of the team and see if we really are capable of doing what we say we want to do. Next Wednesday, the 28th of June, we will be in San Fernando at Joel's Car Park, that is Independence Avenue, San Fernando. We're there from 6 o'clock. We're going to have a vibrant and dynamic lineup of speakers talking to you all manners, all manner of things from all different ways to rescue and rebuild, reinvent and save this nation. If you would like to be a part of any of those things, all of those things, come on board. The bigger we grow this party, people tell me, Philip, you should have been ecstatic. It's a rainy season. It's a long weekend. It's not even election time. Look at people coming to show us. And I saw, and I, I love all of you who came out. But I want to see 10,000 people. I want to see 10,000 people. I, you know who are calling out? Everybody who's ever had somebody in your family murdered. Just the 50,000 of you all, come out. Just the 50,000, because all 10,000 of those people who've been murdered in the last decade, they had to know at least five people. That's 50,000 people. Come out. Anybody who's lost their job, come out. Anybody underemployed, come out. Anybody who's shame of where they're living and the community broken and they can't get goods and services and government don't represent them, come out. That's who I want to come out. The others who happy, who got stay home, but the ones who are miserable, who can't remember when last we had a proper paved road and would like a proper paved road, come out. Those who fed up of the Bankers Association of Trinidad and Tobago and the cartel of money finance spinners in this country taking advantage of doing the people what they want, come out. Come out. If you've ever been advantaged and take, made a fool of, if you, have, if you have a family member who died waiting on an ambulance, come out. Come out. This is what it is for. We are an organization built on challenging what exists. We say that the status quo, that business as usual, cannot continue. And if you agree, come out. If you want to change the country, come out. So we will be in San Fernando on Wednesday, June 28th from 6 p.m. And we will be at 19 Stanmore Avenue this Saturday at noon. Come out. Yeah? peptrinbago at gmail.com and let me tell you something eh? I have a very good memory and I see all the people and all the names who give me all the talks and all of these videos 
And if the 100,000 views that it gets every week, two weeks, come out. Come out. The country that you want requires some sacrifice. It requires some bloody discomfort. I spend every Saturday of my life just calling that. Forget all the other times that I do this all day, all night. But I give up my entire Saturday for this. If three people come, 30 people or 3,000, I dare. The, part, the country that you want is going to require some sacrifice. It's going to require some discomfort. It's going to require you standing up for your country. Yeah? So if you're interested in anything that we said, and if you want a better country, and if you're fed up of the PNM and the UNC and the rape of this country, if you want a better nation, come out. Yeah? If things deteriorate, if there's more information to share, I will be going live again later on today, tonight, tomorrow, early in the morning. I have been a first responder in all of the floods and emergencies that the, that the Northwest have experienced in the past decade. And I fully expect that if there are reasons for them to call out citizens to respond, that I will be there front and center. Um, so, yeah. You'll still be hearing from, from me, but let's take a little break now because this one's going on long. And I'd like to say a special thank you to Colin Hamilton of React, who's been working overtime, keeping us updated. He's been ferreting out information. Shamala Maraj as well. She as well has been working very um, diligently, keeping us updated. When you see I put stuff into the public space, other people are assisting. I keep telling people this. The Progressive Empowerment Party is a strong, vibrant, and formidable team. It is not just me. I am the spokesperson at best. At this point, you need to add yourself to it. You need to come and carve your name in history. Write your name in the sky. Come and be a part of the redevelopment and the change that rescues Trinidad and Tobago. Come out. Yeah? Stay safe, children, and Tobago.